the tattoo conspiracy An interesting little video here and um, just out here for a morning walk with my dog in the woods and I wanted to do a video about this looked up a bunch of information on it on how the development of the of tattooing uh, progressed very interesting information on this but I do have a study on the serious sin of tattooing the Bible does condemn tattoos printing marks upon you and there's a lot of other tie-ins as well um, but if you uh, it's very important to understand the science behind tattoos behind that how they work how it goes down into the dermis layer and it's down in there and it stays the ink stays in place it doesn't go, go throughout the body um, by basically being surrounded by I think it's the T blood cells or the T cells that go around it and it keeps the ink in place and the problem with that is your T cells um, are part of your immune system so if you constantly have and these T cells will wear out then you have to make new ones that, to keep the ink in place so if you constantly have uh, T cells being used to keep uh, the tattoo ink in place um, that's kind of a problem it's a draw on your immune system so if you want to see the science behind it I will be linking the uh, video that I just talked about serious sin of tattooing it will be at the end of this video and um, you can watch that study to see all the information on that and the whole point of this is I'm trying to convince people if you don't have any tattoos please don't get one um, if you do have tattoos uh, please don't get any more and if you do have tattoos you're going to have to really work hard at keeping your immune system up because your immune system has been weakened by the by getting tattoos okay so I do not say any of this stuff in hatred I'm not being you know judgmental um, I'm sincerely concerned for people and I see things that uh, just all of a sudden show up and I think hmm there seems to be some connections here which would make me think that it's part of uh, the devil's plan to uh, really mess people up and that's what I'm going to be talking about so getting into the history of tattooing here in 18 in the 1800s there was a German man named Martin Hildebrandt and Martin Hildebrandt was from uh, he came here to America and he was in the Union Army fought during the Civil War and there were stories of him actually tattooing soldiers they would want their name you know and uh, serial number or whatever else I guess tattooed onto their body um, and just in case you know they were killed in war and then they could help to identify the body better or something if other ID fell out and um, so he was doing that and probably I think they even said that he was tattooing other designs on some of these soldiers and it's kind of an interesting thing because he was a German that came here to America and he was tattooing soldiers very weird because if you study the Holocaust um, a lot of the people that were put into the death camps were tattooed hmm with a serial number very interesting so I just thought that was a kind of a unique little connection but after the Civil War Martin Hildebrandt opened up the very first um, tattoo parlor in 1870 in New York City good old New York City lots of evil things go on there um, a guy that he knew Samuel O'Reilly uh, patented the first tattoo the little you know gun thing or whatever the little machine there you know that thing he patented the design in 1891 okay uh, in 19 by 1900 just nine years later there was a tattoo parlor in every US city hmm things are progressing by the 1950s the uh, tattoos were known and I got this all from a tattoo website by the way this is not me being anti tattoo or whatever else this is their own information but um, by the 1950s the most people that had tattoos were you know bikers gangs uh, what do they say Delin delinquents and lower class that was kind of the when you heard about somebody having a tattoo that's what you pictured you know and uh, maybe some soldiers or whatever else that had 
tattoos or their military service or whatever else but for the most part I mean you look at pictures of of beaches people at the beaches back in those years and on up through you know and nobody has a tattoo I mean you can just look at old vintage pictures of that and uh, nobody has tattoos um, now you look at pictures of the beach or whatever else and a lot of people have tattoos so um, in 1960 the New York City Health Department banned tattoos because of a hepatitis B outbreak. Uh, again, you know, the needles are um, involved with poking into the skin and whatever else, so you can have some uh, bacteria type of things um, if, they're, if they're not using clean needles and whatever else. So they banned tattoos. By the 1970s, the hippie movement came out, and for the first time, they started to use celebrities to uh, promote tattooing. There were celebrities that would get little peace signs or whatever else and uh, have that tattooed onto their body. So 1970s is when they started to promote it in you know, Hollywood. Um, by the 1980s, tattoos started to become very popular among punk rockers as a sign of rebellion. Hmm. The Bible says rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft. Kind of an interesting thing there. Uh, 1997, the tattoo ban was lifted that was there in New York City. They lifted the, the ban on tattoos. Uh, the early 2000s, tattoos became a lot more popular. Again, through Hollywood, through promoting it through the movie industry. Uh, the Hollywood, uh, there's a special place in hell for the people that were in Hollywood down through the years. Tell you what, the evil that has come out of that wicked satanic um, propaganda mill um, that we've exported around the world as well, all these wicked Hollywood movies, is just disgusting. Uh, by 2016, 50% of millennials have tattoos, 69% of them have more than one tattoo. Okay, by 2016, I don't know what it is right now, probably even higher. Um, so, as I stated earlier, uh, it's, you know, the worst part about tattooing, other than, I mean, just the insanity of it, I don't, I don't think it's a very good idea. Um, you know, I mean, if I said to somebody that, you know, here, hold this ink for me, um, and, but don't spill any on yourself, because if you do, it'll, you'll never be able to wash it off. People wouldn't, they'd, oh, no, I don't want that, you know, or, um. You know, you get some soldier, and uh, that soldier has been shot uh, in war, and they're there, and uh, they go to a field hospital to get fixed up, and the surgeon, field surgeon says, uh, hey, sorry, couldn't get the bullet out of you. It'll just be in there for the rest of your life. Uh, the, just left the bullets in you. Uh, no, I don't want that. I don't want something like that in me for the rest of my life, but... You don't want something in you for the rest of your life, but you'll have something in your skin for the rest of your life. Again, tattoos are not on the skin, they're in the skin, which is horrifying to think about. But what's this whole thing really all about? Again, the conspiracy. What's it about? Well, the Bible says in the book of Revelation, chapter 13, that there would be a mark in the forehead or in the hand. And now I believe that that is a reference to a um, implantable microchip. Um, a lot of people were confused about that and they would say, well, the King James Bible's an error because it says in, and you can't have a mark in the right hand or in the forehead. So I don't agree with the King James Bible. Well, that's changed over the years because now people realize that they do have microchips and people are already being implanted with microchips that have all their personal ID type of stuff on it. Uh, very scary to think about that people would be so foolish as to do that. Um, and because anything electronic, anything um, online can be hacked. If it has the ability to be read or whatever else by, you know, uh, some kind of a, you know, something that works with RFID, um, it can be, taken it can be hacked into or whatever else 
so you put your personal identification on a microchip that's inserted in your hand oh it's secure don't worry no it's not that's terrible but people are gullible they fall for things like that um <clears throat> so but this mark of the beast i believe it's twofold you see i believe that there is a mark that is you know the actual financial tracking slash you can't buy or sell unless you have this mark and i believe it is a digital id a, a rfid chip something like that qr code whatever um that's there but i believe that the antichrist system is also going to require a uh, really strict obedience and you're going to have a mark upon the forehead because the king james bible teaches both um that it is in a chip in the head or in the forehead or in the hand but it's also upon you can read about that in revelation chapter 20 revelation 13 says in and Revelation chapter 20 says upon. So it's going to be twofold. And so to get people conditioned, the devil knew that he would have to make tattooing very popular. And I realized that there were ancient primitive you know, cultures and whatever where they would tattoo themselves you know, through very primitive means um, using different dyes and inks and things that they would inject it into their skin and it would stay there and whatnot. I get it, but um, it's not that it just showed up here in the end times, but uh, as far as being a popular movement where, you know, civilized people get tattoos, uh, yeah, that did just show up in the last, in the end times. Um, the ancient people, you didn't see civilized cultures doing it. It was the pagans and, and things like that tattooing themselves. So... And um, just to let you know, if you aren't aware of what the scriptures teach, I would suggest getting a King James Bible. All the other new versions, all other Bible versions mess with the uh, Mark of the Beast prophecy. They won't say in, in Revelation 13. It's just on. Um, and while it's true that I believe it's going to be upon the forehead, uh, you have to be very careful to use the King James Bible, God's pure word, because... It has both, and it's better to have, or you have to have both there, both parts of the prophecy, to be led into the truth. You can't just say, well, I believe it's just going to be on or upon, and that's all that matters. No, um, you have to understand that it's both, and the King James Bible is the only one out there that says it's both, in and upon. So very important to have the Word of God. But read it. Even if you're an atheist or whatever else, check into this thing. Because um, it's leading, you can see this tattoo thing leading up to something. And the implantable microchips and whatever else. And they're talking about central bank digital currencies. And, and we need to have digital IDs and special IDs for those who are content creators online. And, and we need social media and you're carrying around a cell phone that can be used to track you. And... You know, everything's tying together. And uh, the Bible says about this whole system, this mark of the beast system, that um, those who take the mark and worship the beast in his image, it's a three-part thing there, take the mark, worship the beast and his image, um, that those people will be damned for all of eternity without any chance. It isn't some kind of a thing. I mean, if you've gotten a tattoo, well, you didn't take the mark of the beast, okay? You made a dumb decision, and um, you're paying for it with a lowered immune system, which, again, you know, works out with the thing of pestilence because the devil says, I'm going to make these people uh, more susceptible to pestilence, to, to disease and famine and whatever else. I'll lower their immune system. And... Um, pretty bad deal very bad bad deal so is there a conspiracy behind the tattoo phenomena absolutely I don't doubt it for one second um, and as I said at the beginning I'm not making this video to anger people or be judgmental you know or anything else uh, 
I'm saying if you don't have a tattoo and you're considering getting one, please do not. It's more than just a spiritual issue. It's also a physical issue. It's also diminishing your immune system. Um, if you, you know, I'm going to go this way, I guess. If you have a tattoo, don't get another one. And if you have a tattoo, um, you really have to work hard at getting your nutritional health in check to avoid getting sick. Heard of a guy here recently that's very heavily tattooed and um, developing blood clots. And, um, and he didn't take the COVID vaccination thing. And uh, uh, spider web in the eyes. <laughs> and, you know, he's in good shape, good health. But, you know, the more tattoos you have on your body, the lower your immune system is going to be. And uh, there was a video I saw a while back. I've referred to this before. But another thing that you can do is uh, fir trees and spruce trees especially produce, they put off an essential oil. And that essential oil actually helps your T cells to really uh, grow good and, and everything else. T cell production goes way up when you're breathing these essential oils in. That's why I like to take walks back here. We nickname this the Healing Woods because uh, there's a lot of fir trees you can see behind me here. And it smells really amazing and uh, it always lifts my spirits going back in through here and and um, or my spirit but uh, <laughs> using the old saying there but um, it's important study things that can get you into good shape good health and uh, you know I'll say this too there have been times I've had headaches and I come out here and I get, take a walk on my property and get around the fir trees and the spruce trees, which is funny because, well, I'm, I'm getting ahead of myself, and uh, my headache will go away. It's amazing. And uh, no Excedrin. I used to live on Excedrin back many years ago. I was a sugar addict, and I was just constantly getting headaches and things. But it's kind of an interesting thing because one of the, uh, a picture of the Lord is um, a green fir tree, like this one. Kind of an interesting thing um and so if the lord is depicted as a green fir tree and the lord can heal you well think about that you say well the god is symbolized by trees that means you're a pagan religion <laughs> no it's a lot deeper than that just like uh, jesus christ being compared to the sun doesn't mean that we just worship the sun like all other pagan cultures a lot of dumb people out there this whole zeitgeist movement and everything don't understand the scriptures don't understand symbology and typology and things like that and that uh, ancient cultures uh, counterfeited christianity um, it's not that christianity is just another pagan ancient pagan religion that's stupid nonsense but uh, these people don't do much study they don't do much research so that's why they come up to really dumb conclusions but i pray that you won't come to a dumb conclusion and get a tattoo or get another tattoo. Um, if you're a young person out there, you need to understand why uh, getting a tattoo is part of a satanic conspiracy. Stay away from it. Don't get one. All right, so that is going to be it for this video. Making my way back through our trail here. Head to the office, get some more work done. So please do continue to pray for the ministry. And we'll see you in upcoming videos. Thank you for watching.